Good evening. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Fantastic. And do we see the one way ANOVA on title slide? Yes. Fantastic. Okay, well, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, depending on where you're calling in from. Again, I'm Dr. Reggie Taylor from the Academic um, Office of um, Research and Doctoral Services. I'm an Academic Success Coordinator. And this evening, um, I will be facilitating the session on the one way. ANOVA. And what we'll do here, again, is I'm going to go over some brief housekeeping notes. Um, we'll talk about easing our anxiety. Uh, we'll talk about the scales of measurement. Again, those of you that have attended um, these sessions, I believe now, and hopefully you're seeing the importance of understanding the scales of measurement as it pretty much dictates everything that we can and cannot do. Um, we'll then jump right into the one-way ANOVA, where we look at the conceptualization of the test, you know, what it is, why we use it, why is it different from, say, another type of test, et cetera. And we'll look into the data set, um, the scenario um, that those individuals that may be taking um, the research course, um, look at some possible one-way ANOVAs. And we'll be doing that uh, via um, SPSS version 29. So you may see some differences um, in the screens here and there, um, but, but you'll get the gist of everything there. And we'll look at some SPSS output from the one way ANOVA and interpret that. And as always, turn that into an APA compliant results um, write up. Uh, you'll look at an exemplar here, and I'll provide you with the copy of an exemplar as we've done for everything else, okay? And we'll also look at some upcoming seminars. And um, I'll always uh, point you to the survey and the link that you can get to the recording session for any previous uh, session, okay? So let's jump right into the scales of measurement. And we know now in SPSS, that anytime we look into a data set and we look at a variable, um, that one of the most important things um, to understand uh, is the scales of measurement. And we have basically four types, um, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. And as we know now, the interval and ratio is represented by the scale in SPSS. So thus, you do have four scales of measurement. And everyone should be pretty familiar with that if you have attended any of the previous sessions, okay? So now let's jump right into the one-way analysis of variances, um, in short, called the ANOVA, the one-way ANOVA. Now, what is this one-way ANOVA test? And it's really just an extension of what we did last week or, or the independent samples t-test, if you're familiar with that. Now, when we looked at this, the independent samples t-test, we looked at um, the differences between two groups. Um, for example, gender that had male and female. And we compare the male and females on some numerical outcome variable or that scale, interval, or ratio variable. Um, but notice, the one-way ANOVA allows us to do something a little bit more than looking at two groups. It allows us to look at two or more groups. And that is the difference between the independent samples t-test and the one-way ANOVA. So you may have a research situation where you need to look at three groups or four groups or five groups and compare those groups. For example, you know, ethnicity. A lot of research you look at, individuals are using, you know, multiple ethnic groups, and they may be wanting to compare those ethnic groups on some outcome. Well, if it's more than two ethnic groups, then that individual can't use the independent samples t-test. They have to use the one-way ANOVA. Does that make sense to everyone? So remember, one of the main things that we want to understand is that when I start seeing these things, one sample t-test, repeated measures t-test, independent samples t-test, 
one way or another. We want to start recognizing and understanding, okay, why is this test used? What is the difference between this test and the other test? So we have three groups. Now, you can also run the ANOVA with two groups. You'll get the same output, but again, you have more than two groups. You'd use the one-way analysis of variance, okay? So an example research question and hypotheses, again, they're stylistic preferences in the way these are written, so don't hold this you know, strictly to be. But again, remember, we're looking for that significant gender difference, the gender average. Remember, the mean is the average. The GPA difference amongst the Walden students, but we're going to look at that by gender. Does one gender have statistically higher GPA scores than the other group? But now you may be saying, excuse me, well, Dr. Taylor, um, you said it's for two groups or more than two groups. And what we're going to look at here in this example, we'll see that when we look at gender, we're going to look at gender with three groups, okay? And what those three groups will be, will be male group, female group, in a non-binary group. So remember in SPSS, we're gonna code, say for example, a male is a zero, a female is a one, and then as a two, we would say non-binary for an individual that does not respond, you know, will not respond to the male or the female. So in essence, we have three groups, okay? And we wanna see these three groups differ. And that's what, the impetus behind the one-way ANOVA is, again, almost exactly the same thing as the independent samples t-test, but now we have extended our independent variable to three levels versus two, or more than two. It could be four, five, et cetera. All righty? So, as with any... <clears throat> Parametric test, as we've done the last three sessions, the one sample T test, the independent samples T test, the repeated measures T test, they all came with data assumptions. You know, those characteristics of the data that uh, should be met for us to have confidence in the results. And you remember when we did the script of statistics back several weeks ago, we looked at the normal distribution and we looked at how to um, plot outliers and things of that nature. And so these are the things that we call data assumptions. Now let's look at what these specific assumptions are for the um, one-way ANOVA. Those assumptions are as you see here. Now what you'll see here is that in blue, I have written if this assumption is pretty much just a design ass assumption. Basically, you won't do anything in SPSS to test this assumption. But you want to make sure that when you go into a data set that you select that continuous dependent variable. You don't test this in SPSS. You select the continuous dependent variable. <laughs> also, we know that we need to have that nominal or that categorical independent variable, and it must have two or more independent groups. Now, here is a screen capture inside SPSS. Remember the value labels. And here you can see we have three groups. And so in SPSS, the way that this researcher coded the data was that they gave the males a code of one, the females a code of two, and the non-binary a code of three. And remember, you don't do any mathematical calculations with the nominal data. You're not saying a male is a half of a female or a female is twice the male or the male is one third. You, you don't do mathematics. You don't have an average. You're just using these values here to categorize your data. So in other words, every time you would see the three in a data set, you know that that would be a non-binary response. But now we know that then once we get an SPSS, that there are those assumptions, excuse me, that we have to test. 
And those assumptions are as follows. The first one is that the normal distribution, and we have looked at that before. We also want to make sure there's no outliers in the data. Okay, we've looked at that before. And also here, we want to make sure that we have equal variances. And we did this also with the independent samples t-test. So pretty much the same assumptions that we want to test and assess in SPSS. Okay? So how would we do that? We would do that the exact same way we did that when we did the descriptive statistics session, when we did the one sample, the independent samples, the paired samples t-test. We look at assess the outliers and on, on normality all in the same procedure. And again, you know, you'll just follow the numbered arrows, and we'll look at this in SPSS. But as you can see, as you can see here, it's just analyze the scriptors, and it's the explore command. And the explore option will pop up, as you can see here. And remember now, the dependent variable, we're comparing the GPA score. And this is where you would put that scale dependent variable. Now, in the ANOVA, when we talk about independent variables, and this is an important concept, when we talk about <laughs> independent variables in ANOVA, we are talking about, you'll hear it called a factor, okay? So that will mean the same thing. If it's a factor, it's an independent variable. And we know that gender has three categories, male, female, and non-binary, okay? Now, we'll hit OK. We'll go into the statistics area. And again, just select descriptives. Make sure we always remember we want to report our confidence intervals, the 95%. And then you can just make sure that all of these things are um, selected here, OK? But this is the procedure, the explore procedure, again, that gives us all of the capability of assessing the outliers, and the normality, okay? As you can see right here, make sure this is checked, but you can see the normality plots with the test. This will be the normality test right here. So make sure 11 is checked. So the normality plots with tests, and that will give us what we need. When we hit continue, you all are familiar now if you've attended the sessions before, you've seen the box plot that looks at outliers. Now, anyone that's attended any of the other sessions would you care to let us know if we have any outliers in this data set? And if so, in what group does that outlier belong? We do, and it's in the male group. Exactly. And it would be case number what? Exactly, fantastic, record number 46. So we could go into that data set and just go down the list until we get the record number 46, and we can make a decision to just delete that record, okay? But we're not gonna get into all that you know, depth now, but you understand that we have to look at outliers and that box plot will get us that. And we know that we have no outliers in the female gender and no outliers in the non-binary gender, okay? So someone, some male in the GB in the GPA cap in the GPA had a very, very high over a 4.0, had a 4.8, 4.9. I've heard of that. I don't know how you get it, but you know, there was an overachiever there. So you can see again how the graphics help us understand the data. We couldn't find that information if we look at the 800 individual records in the data view remember? But this lets us quickly get an understanding of what's going on. So we have an outlier in this data set. Now, <laughs> what's also produced with that same report, remember? The shapiro wills -Tet test of normality. And here we go. Now, can anyone um, tell me what's going on here? <clears throat> have the test of normality or the assumption of normality, has it been violated? 
significant results. What does that mean? Remember, this information answers our question as to if the assumption has been violated. From this that we're looking at, <clears throat> would the answer be yes or no? Has the assumption been violated or not? Yes, because they're less than, excuse me, they're less than 0 0.05. But what you want to make sure you understand is that this is per group. So you have a male category, you have a female category. So all three of these appear to have violated the assumption of normality. Okay? So from this data set now, we know, first of all, that when we're doing our data diagnostics, we know that we have an outlier in the male category, and we know that we have violated the assumption of normality in all categories, okay? Now, there's one more test that we have to test and that's the um, equal variances, but that is run in the ANOVA procedure when we actually get to run the test. Now let's look at how we run the one-way ANOVA. Again, we know that we always go to the analyze. Remember, we are comparing group means. Number two here, we're comparing group means. When we make that selection, remember we've done the one sample t-test, we've done the independent, we've done the pairs, but what you're gonna do, because you have three groups, you're gonna select the one-way ANOVA. So again, as you can see, we're now starting to get an understanding of when we select the appropriate test and under what conditions each test is used, okay? Now, and notice these are all to compare means. All these tests are to compare means. So remember, the dependent variable is that scale variable, GPA. Do the groups differ in their GPA? What groups? The gender group. Remember the three groups, male, female, and non-binary, okay? And when we hit the OK button, what we need to do now is select some options. Now, remember we selected, we had to test the assumption of equal variances right here, remember? All of these here are just different types of tests that will assess equal variances. You don't need to be concerned with that. A very common one used is what we call the LSD test. So just click on LSD. Now, also, it's a possibility that the assumptions of equal variances may not be met. And if it is not met, then we're going to do something and report the statistics for done at C. What's happening is, is that anytime this assumption is not met, one of these tests actually makes a correction to the data. That's what's happening, okay? And we would report this line of statistics versus this line of statistics. And we did that in the t-test, but you'll see that, excuse me, you'll see that again here in just a second, okay? And again, we want to skip the statistics, you know, the test of variance, et cetera. Just follow this. Again, always get your 95% confidence symbol, okay? But the main thing on this slide is, is that we're going to test the assumption of equal variances here. Remember, we did the outliers and normality with another set of tests. Equal variances is done once we run the ANOVA, okay? Now... Give me just a second. And what happens is we get the output. And here we go where we start interpreting and understanding the answer to that research question. Is there a significant difference between the groups? Now, the thing that's important to understand about the one-way ANOVA when we look at output is remember, when we did the independent samples t-test, we only 
compare two groups. That's all it can do. And we know that the difference was between the males and the females when we did the T-test. But because we have more than two groups, we don't really know where the difference may lie. Is that difference between the males and the females? Or is that difference between the male and the non-binary? Or is it the difference between the female and the non-binary? There's a lot of different options here. Okay, so keep that in mind. Because we have three groups. Imagine if we had a fourth group, a fifth group, a sixth group. You can see all of those multiple comparisons would need to be understood. Exactly where are all of these differences? And again, this is your descriptive statistics. And we can see the amount of people in each group, 28 men, 28, I mean, 33 women and 19 non-binary responses. This was the average GPA scores, okay? As you can see. Standard deviations, et cetera, the confidence intervals, okay, for the average score, which is right here. Remember, we looked at that. So the mean would be as low as 3.5 and as high as 3.8, okay? For males, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the box plot, remember? That outlier is there. Variances, equal variances, based on the mean, the GPA, equal variances, was violated, okay? Because, well, excuse me, was not violated. It's not less than 0.05. This is the actual results of the test right here. Let's erase this and look at that. And it's just like all the other tests that we looked at before, okay? Where we are gonna dissect everything bit by bit here, okay? Because we understand descriptives and all that, what the box plot is, the assumptions. Now, the ANOVA test, is there a difference between groups? And you can clearly see that it states right in here, what the table states is between groups. The ANOVA table. Is there a significant difference between these groups? Anyone would like to answer that in the chat? Is there a significant difference? No, it is not. Exactly. There is no difference between these groups. We know that the means differ somewhat. We know that. Okay. What is these statistically significant differences? No, they are not. Simple as that. We always report the effect size. How large was that mean difference? For the GPA and for the ANOVA, remember last week for the last three tests, we used something called Cohen's D. That's the measure of effect size for the T-test. But then when we move to the ANOVA, there's something different called ETA squared. So as you can see, we're starting to learn. We report and we look at the same thing, effect sizes, but they differ based on the test, okay? So this would be the ETA squared. And as you can see, it's 0 0.007. And remember from effect sizes, if we move the decimal two places to the right, we get a percentage, just less than 1%. So very small effect, thus no significant difference, et cetera. Does everybody see that and get an understanding now and kind of can parallel that to all the other tests we've been doing? Kind of the same thing, different tests, but you know, a different concept, but we're looking to do the exact same thing. We're looking to understand our descriptive statistics. We're looking at our um, assumptions. And then we're looking at the results of the statistical test along with the effect sizes. And as you can remember, we have done that for every single statistical test that we have looked at thus far. Is everybody good with that? Remember, our average scores are here, outliers, equal variances, this was met, 
The overall ANOVA between the groups, they did not differ. Now, when you see this output, you should be able to understand a lot better now what is going on with the one-way ANOVA. Now, there's a final thing that we have to do, right? We have to take this output and turn it into words, into a narrative. And it's pretty much the exact same format. Let's take a look at that. Remember, we always just tell the reader what we did here. The one-way ANOVA was conducted. And again, all we're doing is just kind of restating what we did. Difference in the GPA among Walden students. We clearly state what the independent variable was, gender. We let the reader know there were three categories and we identified them. The reported GPA score was the scale dependent variable. And you can see we've made the case that the ANOVA is correct because we're looking for differences among three groups on a scale dependent variable. Does everybody see that? That that's really what those first two or three sentences is really telling us, okay? Now, remember the next thing that we have to do is then tell the reader what are the results of the assumptions test. We have to assess the assumptions first, right? And we call those preliminary analysis. Or you can say the assumptions, whatever you want to say. But the whole point is that you understand the scope of what you're trying to do. So let's look at that now. Preliminary analyses were conducted. And again, we just take the assumptions and remember three of them, outliers, normality, and equality of variances. And we simply state the results of what we did. One outlier was identified in the male group, remember? And we're gonna say here in figure one, and in figure one, what would that figure one be in the write-up? What would that figure one be? The box plot, exactly. But then what I'm saying here, and again, this is for our seminar purposes, I simply told the reader, which was retained in the analysis. So I just kept it in the analysis. I could have said, which was removed from the analysis, either way. Now, the next assumption was normality. Remember the um, Shapiro-Wilk test? All three of those were significant, or in a case where they were significant. Let's just put it that way. This is an example where all three were significant, okay? And then what I said here was that you should judge these results with caution. And that's usually a statement that people make when, um, you know, the assumptions are violated if they don't do anything else, okay? Now, and then we say the assumption of equal variances was not significant. Remember, and this is all coming from the output. And then, here we go. <laughs> the results of the ANOVA were, in this case, not significant. I'm just writing an example of this because we've been looking at examples where everything was significant. Now, this is just an example. And then again, remember this used to be a T for the T test. Then the parentheses. And we had something in there. Well, we have an F now because the ANOVA is in the F test family and it's based on an F distribution versus a T distribution, but we don't need to really get into all that. But you know now that if you see an F, you know you weren't looking at a T test. You know that. Now, the two in the 77. Let's go back here to some output. Let me see if I have that correct here. You see right here? From the ANOVA, the degrees of freedom, the two in the 77, that's the degrees of freedom from the between groups and within groups. And you'll note that that's what we have listed here inside of there, okay? We'll report the F value and the significance value. And let's look at that again in the, right, in the um, output. From right here, the F value and the significance value. Okay, 
So again, once we get this output, we're simply just transferring this information. But you see how now we understand what we're looking at and we can take this and turn it into a narrative that someone can look at and say, ah, I understand now what the results of this test were, okay? Now, we can then go a little further. Um, and in this case, say there's no statistically significant difference. Bingo, simple as that. And then we can put tables of descriptive statistics. The ANOVA summary table is always required. And we're gonna take a look at that, okay? Now, what I'd like to do at this point, I mean, I see there's some um, questions there. Um, if you could put them in the Q&A thread, I'd appreciate that. I can have one place to look. But give me just a second. I'll try to get into that chat and get to those. But um, let's take a, a look now and make sure that we understand the exemplar, okay? You're gonna get this, okay? And remind me to make sure we get this into the chat. Again, as you can see, wow, it's pretty big there. We just state kind of what we did here, the one way ANOVA. And you've seen these exemplars before, am I correct? Have these exemplars been helpful? in the applications for those that have been taking the course. Okay, fantastic. So again, this is the same format. Okay, so I don't need to go through all of this again. Okay. But again, here's the question. You know, is there a difference in gender? But this time, the exemplar is saying, is there a difference in dissertation anxiety? Okay. Not GPA, dissertation anxiety. Remember, there's no difference. There is a difference for so the hypotheses. Okay. Now, we're just really restating what we did here, just as we've done before. Now, here, for the application assignment, we're showing a little bit about uh, we know what the ANOVA is, and we're going to cite something, what the requirements for the ANOVA. Again, remember, nominal independent verb with two or more, blah, blah, blah. And then stating therefore, the no is appropriate because we have three groups, three categories, and one ratio dependent variable. Then we go right into the results and we just state what we did, restating what the variables were. And as you can see here, the preliminary, preliminary analysis, again, outlier of normality, inequality of variances. In this case, we're saying the outlier assumption was violated, figure one over here. And we can see in this case, I'll see if I can make it a little bigger for you, and you can maybe tell me, what's happening in this box plot right here? Okay, let's put something in the chat here. What's going on? You see this in front of you, what would you kind of say? Were there outliers in this data set? Yes, they were. In what groups? What group did not have an outlier? Fantastic. You see that? And that's what you're going to be looking at and understanding now when you see box plots. Okay? Fantastic. Now, let me get this size back down here. Okay. Well, a little bigger. Now, so now the results were significant in this case. Remember the slides, they were not significant. But remember the two and the 77 down here, remember the two and the 77, the between groups and the within groups. Okay. The F statistic was 4.143. 4.143. And the p-value was 0 0.02. Was there a statistically significant difference in these groups in terms of their dissertation anxiety? Yes, it was. And the effect size is called ETA squared. And that's that little symbol there, the N squared. That stands for ETA squared, which is the effect size, was 0 0.097. So approximately 9% of the variance is accounted for by the gender, okay? 
Now, what you'll have here is, again, this is important here now. Please, everyone, I'm going to try to make this bigger. This is what we call within ANOVA post hoc analysis. Now, remember, if we only had two groups, we know that the difference is only between, say, the males and the females. We know that. Or if we just had males against the non-binary, we know that. But with the ANOVA, we can have more than two groups. And in this case, we do. So what we have to do then is tell the reader where are these specific pairwise differences between which groups. So in this case, this, remember the OSD and remember the Dunnett C, you're gonna report for whichever line the assumptions met. So if Dunnett C was selected, that's if the assumption was not met. Remember of the um, equal variances. So you would report the data on the bottom half. If the assumption was met, you would report the data on the top half in the LSD. Does everybody see that? But what this means is, is this. This is the comparison group, the first group here, the male group right here. Let me um, turn on something here that can help us. No, I don't have them. Let me see if I can draw here. Yeah, we'll leave it alone. But the male group here is the comparison group, okay? And we look over here, just comparing the male to the females. You see the asterisk here? The mean difference is significant down here at the 05 level. So what that means is that the difference, there's a difference between the male and the female group. Does everybody see that? That first line there, does everybody see that and understand that? Now, remember, not only are we comparing the males to the females, but we're comparing the males to the non-binary, right? Is there a significant difference between the males and the non-binary from this, would you tell? No, it is not, because we don't see the asterisk here that tells us that there's a difference. Now, let's use the female here as the comparison group. Of course, the male is going to be significantly different because we're just reversing the groups here. But And you can see the mean difference is the same. It's just that it it's negative here. Now, we also have now the non-binary. So each group is looked at separately as the comparison group against the other remaining groups. So the non-binary is not significant to the male. The non-binary is not significant to the female. I mean, excuse me, the um, non-binary is not significant difference from the female. Does everybody see that in the post-hoc table? Now, the reason I wanted you to see that is we go over here to the right, it'll tell us what the SIG is, okay? So as we can see, the male, female was significant, less, of course, less than 0.05. Again, greater than 0.05. So I want you to understand that because this is the piece that you have to decipher. If it's more than two groups, suppose this was six groups, you can imagine how this table would look. But when you look at it, you're able to understand it and say, okay, now I can see you wouldn't write all of this up in a narrative. It's hard to discern if this is in a paragraph written format, all these numbers, this group and that group. That's why you use tables. So you would have a post hoc analysis table, and this would explain to you where the pairwise differences are. That's very important to understand in the one-way ANOVA, okay? Now, let me get to a couple of questions here. Um, okay, I don't know why your Shapiro will, would not show up. I couldn't tell you that would have to be what you selected there. Again, why wouldn't the researcher delete the outliers? If you look again um, in the slide, I indicated that this was just for example purposes. But a lot of times, if it doesn't change your means and your averages a lot, that's a reason that one would not remove an outlier. 
Another reason is suppose sample size is um, an issue. You try not to remove a lot of data. So it's a lot of analysis that goes into if you remain, if your outlier remains or doesn't. So these are examples here, practice examples. So we can't get very prescriptive here, but you'll see that there's footnotes. Let me go back to the um, exemplar. That's what I was saying. Look at the exemplars very carefully also, and you'll see at the bottom of the exemplar, I believe um, there should be some footnotes here, right here. A detailed discussion on the options for addressing assumption violations beyond the scope of this document, okay? But that's a good question, but yeah, it could be a lot of things that you do. One researcher may do something completely different from the other. The key in your write-up is to tell the reader what you did and why you did it, okay? Now, the ETA square have the same interval meaning as the Cohen's. It's a group comparison test. So yeah, it's very what somewhat very, very um, similar. Depending on who you read, it may vary a bit. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna get this exemplar here, okay? But everyone understands and I tried to color code it. So as you can see that some of these letters in here are kind of yellow and orange and red. And what that is, is that aligns with where the information comes from the table. So you see the degrees of freedom are in blue and they should be blue here again, you see in the document. And um, then to help you in your application, if you're doing this, remember this is just for your help that these are the things that you should have as a minimum, the box plot. Okay, here's the box plot that's been cut and pasted. Your test of normality, okay? Here's your test of normality. Your descriptives, okay? Your homogeneity test, your NOVA test, the effect size test, and then the post hoc test. This is the output that should be cut and pasted um, at the end of your application assignment. Because remember, it is this output that you're using to make your narrative write up. Okay, this is everybody understand that. So you can see it's pretty much the same concepts of what we have been doing with the other tests. And as you progress throughout the term, you're gonna see it's pretty much the same format. There's a test, you understand the reason for running that test, you understand the assumptions, you test those assumptions, you run the test, you report the results. Exact same thing. So is this starting to get a little bit more um, understandable, the concept of statistics and data analysis? And is that anxiety starting to go down a little bit? That's the whole idea. Again, we can't get into a lot of specifics here, um, but as you can see, this is kind of where you're going, okay? And what you're trying to do. So now, before we forget, let's go ahead and get these documents. And again, remember, this is where I can be reached. Any questions and comments, you find any errors, mistakes, things don't make sense in here. Because I'm putting these things together very quickly, week after week, to try to get them ready for you. But again, remember, you can get other resources at these sites right here. So the first thing we're going to do now is let's go ahead and um, let's get these um, documents. Uh, let me see, where's the chat? Okay. To everyone. Okay, so check into the chat now, and you should see... Um, The exemplar document should be in the bottom of the chat. And now the, uh, the presentation should be there, okay? Now, to make sure that we get through everything here, We looked at the exemplar. Now remember, <clears throat> your scenario for the ANOVA is to use either the Afro barometer data set or the high school long survey data set. <laughs> remember, <clears throat> it doesn't tell you what dependent variable to use, so you're gonna select that. But remember, remember the post hoc test? Remember that's the test that when you have more than two groups, which you will have, and you're gonna tell the reader where those pairwise differences are. Remember the strength of the relationship, that's the effect size. And we have put all of that into the exemplar, okay? We put the output, 
you have access to that, you know what that is. And again, you'll make up a social change and, um, implication. Again, I, I can't really tell you what that would be. So let's um, take a look here um, and let's open up, let's say, the high school long data set. Um, Okay, that data set's open now. Okay, here we're in variable view. And these are all the variables, again, these are the variables in the data set. For example, that's the student's sex, gender. Now you couldn't use this one because remember now, let's go and look in the values column. And you see, they have male and female. Those are the only two categories. You're not gonna be worried about these negative nine, negative eight, and negative sevens because that's addressing something we call missing values. But you can see this would not be appropriate for the ANOVA. You don't have, well, you could, you have two or more groups, but you want to do something with more than two groups. So let's take a look at something like, um, and, well, the easiest thing to do is to go over to the measure column. And I'm just gonna move that over a little bit because you know that you have to select a categorical, Variable. So we know they're all a nominal one. So here's a nominal variable, okay? Right here. And this is something about school. Let me see what the label is. School control. Now, I'm not sure what that is, but let's see what... Give me just a second here, control. And let's see what's going on here. You couldn't use that one again if you're trying to use more than two groups, you see? So public, Catholic, or private... So let's look at another one. Let's look at um, school locale, location of the school. Now, see, this one could be appropriate. You have a, a city location, a suburban, a town, and a rural. So is there a significant difference between school location which is a nominal variable with four categories. And I don't know the school location and I don't know what would be another variable, but that's what you kind of scale of students. What's this location? And I don't know if location in mathematics would have anything to do why one student in one location may have, you know, a higher math, but that's what you're looking for. You then make the research question up. What is the relationship between school location and whatever dependent variable that you select? Does that make sense to everybody? What you're looking for when you get into the data set? Does it make sense? So for example, let's, let's do something here. Let's go analyze, let's go compare means, and let's go um, ANOVA. Now, I, I'm not gonna test any assumption or anything, but we said that the school location was um, was a variable, right? With four categories. Oh, where's that variable at? Yeah, the locale I'm gonna put into the factor. Remember the independent variable. And then just, just look at um, Mathematic self-efficacy. So is there a difference in school location, and excuse me, in math self-efficacy based on school location? I have no idea. But remember, we'll select LSD and then we'll select the done at C. Options. We want some descriptives. We want a homogeneity test. And let's just stop there and hit OK. And then we're just going to look at this output and see can we understand it based on what we've looked at. Now, based on this, remember the ANOVA test? Is there a significant difference between these groups in terms of their, what, what were we measuring? Mass self-efficacy? Yes, it was. Bingo, 0 0.002. Here are the averages right here. Here is um, the post hoc test, look at that. Now let's see where these differences were, okay? So we can see between the city and the suburb, no difference 
because the asterisk is not there. Plus, it's not said. But there was a difference between the city and the town. You see, the asterisk is there, 0 0.003. It was a difference between the city and the rural. Does everybody see that now? And we'll be able to understand the postdoc test. Now, rather than stating all of that in the narrative and trying to write that out, again, that's where you, you could simply say in something like your, um, in your exemplar that um, table three depicts the results of the post hoc analysis. And then you would have your um, table three, which would be your post hoc analysis. Does everybody see that? And now the reader is able to come through here and see <clears throat> Which one? <clears throat> yeah, you'll have postdoc analysis in all ANOVA tests that have more than two groups. If you're comparing only two groups, then it's obviously that's where the difference is between group A and group B. But if you have group A, group B, group C, and group D, then you need the post hoc test. So yes, more than two groups, you need the post hoc test. Makes sense to everybody. You feel a lot better? Has the anxiety went down a bit about the one-way ANOVA? Now, again, as you can see, if you use the other Afro-barometer data set, you do the same thing. You look for that categorical variable with more than two levels and that scale-dependent variable, right? Now, coming up after we do the ANOVA, the ANOVA and the series of t-tests that we looked at were what we call group comparison tests. We were comparing groups in one way or another, two groups or more than two groups or two related groups with the paired sample t-test. Now you're gonna be moving into what we call now relationship tests or correlation tests. And you're not comparing things, but you're looking at associations. You're looking at relationships. And the first one that you'll start with will be the Pearson product moment correlation test followed by a bivariate regression test. And we will be doing those next week, the 16th and the 17th of April. And these will be the registration links, okay? You should also get the registration links through your normal channels of how you've been notified for this. So does everybody see that, okay? So that should be, I believe, next Tuesday and Wednesday, if I'm correct, all right? So again, please take advantage of looking at the resources out here at the ORDS website, please continue to fill out the survey, okay? So in summation, we hopefully have eased that anxiety. We understand again, the importance of the scales of measure because if you select two scale variables, it's gonna be wrong. We know the importance of that now. We know the one way and over for two or more, we're gonna select at least more than two. And then we know that we have to look at the post hoc test. You have the exemplar, to use as an example, you modify that as needed. We looked into one of these data sets to see that we like to make sure that we go into the measure column and identify the nominal variable, click to see how many categories are in that nominal variable. You know now what seminars are coming up to align with your upcoming Pearson's correlation and bivariate regression. Please, please fill out the survey. And the recording link will be out here at the YouTube channel and also be at the ORT site. Now, what I wanted to do is because I control this page here, I just wanted to go out here to the web right quick and show you that what's happening is that what we're doing is kind of building our library. And if you go out here to this web page, remember, we worked our way this term through the descriptive statistics, the one sample t test, the independent samples, the repeated measures. You'll see the ANOVA here by tomorrow, okay? So that everybody understand kind of how we're doing this now, right? That's how we're kind of going. And then I'll get the ORDS website updated and they'll be out there too, the links, okay? So you always have these as on-demand resources to use and to look at over and over again, to follow, to practice with, to make sure you understand and ease that anxiety for your application assignments. Okay, so that's all that I had. Um, let me look at this Q&A thread one last time and see, I think I've answered those. Mm. Okay, so is everybody good to go? 
until we meet again. And hopefully um, we're doing these in enough time, you know, so that you don't have to rush and try to get your applications together. But you have some days to kind of let the information decipher and set in and look at it over and over and work on your application, look at it, you know, make any adjustments, et cetera. But more so, the important thing is for you to start understanding what you are doing and why you're going from one test to the next. Remember, you're taking a course, perhaps. But even if not, you're going to do a dissertation and you are going to do an exhaustive literature review. And by that, that means even if you're doing a qualitative study, that study should also educate us on the quantitative research that's been done in that field, on that topic. This behooves you to understand how to read that quantitative research also so that you can critically analyze that literature. So does everybody understand the importance of this, regardless if you're doing quantitative or qualitative, not only for your coursework here, but for later on to get through that dissertation. So this has extended purposes here. So keep this stuff in mind. Keep the links to these videos so that you can go back to them. Let's say you pull up a journal article and you it's important to your topic, but you don't quite remember the independent sample steep test. But that's what those authors did. Click on the link re-educate yourself on the t-test then go back there and you're better able to critically analyze and synthesize that article does that make sense so remember this is for you to use throughout your journey and not necessarily one particular weekly application my friends okay so as normal i'm going to keep the class open for a few minutes if anyone needs to grab um you know the um, exemplars out or the um, presentation, et cetera, okay? So thank you again for attending. Please go to that survey, please, please, please. And if not, I'll see you next Tuesday and next Wednesday. And even if I don't, you know how to get to the um, on-demand seminar. So thank you, my friends. Stay blessed until we meet again.